Hi guys, today is Friday and very excited day. I'm going to my classmate David. He works for Corporation Komatsu. How have you decided your passion? I couldn't find a job. Not Elon Musk, Komatsu was first. And million Apple 35. Dream big, but start from small. Yeah, like, like this is Kelly. I'm so happy to be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I visit my friend David from uh, school, Kellogg 134, and he was tell us a little bit more about Komatsu and his journey in, uh, in this company. Sure. Uh, introduce a little bit yourself and tell us for how many years have you been working here? Yeah, so uh, this is David Guardamino. Guardamino, uh, I have a unique last name. I work for Komatsu Mining uh, for over 10 years now. Mechanical engineers, a background, Peruvian, and moved to the States back in 2019. So basically I've been working for this company all my life. I haven't switched any companies before. I kind of find it like really interesting for me to, to actually be part of this company, like already in my veins. I've been doing, you know, this machine for basically since the day I was an intern. Um, so these machines, as you can see, it's very big. This machine is around 20 years of its life. Like you usually buy a machine and we usually expect a customer to have it for 20 years. But at the year 10, uh, you're supposed to do like a major overhaul. Okay. So that's that's when I started. I was planning, I was a planner for the major overhaul Overflow. of this machine. Yeah. And I remember you told me a story. You came from uh, Peru right away to Komatsu, right? Yes. As I invite you and you work for Komatsu in Peru as well? Yes. So at that time, the, the the company used to be named Joy Global, and Joy Global was bought for by Komatsu. So I was working for Joy Global Peru at the time, and I just got transferred here. So, wow. interesting journey from South America came from right away to Komatsu. And tell us a little bit story. It's a Japanese company. It is now Japanese. Uh, I would say that we are still on the. We are already already like integrating to uh, the, to the Japanese American culture. It's a journey. This is not only here. You know, we are merging together all over the planet. So it's going to take us some time. But I mean, we are like in very good shape. We can say like now we are Japanese. You know, as Komatsu is a big company. One of the really nice perks about Komatsu, what I would say, I'm. Um, of course, I'm having my, my Komatsu branding right now. Like Komatsu is usually partnering with customers for the long term. They, they don't partner like, you know, for a year to year. And a really proof of that is this manufacturing facility. Uh, now we're in the main building where David works. Yep. He comes here every day. He can option to work from, from home, but he prefers to work from office. And yeah, you can see it's brand new building. And this place is actually called uh, South Harbor. This is a big part of this, you know, this land used to be like, you know, a reclamation before, like it used to be nothing from the city. So actually Komatsu offer to the city to have this land. Part of the, the commitment with the community is actually to allow guests like you or myself, like, you know, to be here. And also we have a coffee shop where students in this university can actually just cross. And this is a university see. here? This is a university. This is the freshwater science of studies. So there is a huge mock-up of the whole facility. If you guys want to take a look here. Yeah. So this is our facility and this is the office building. Uh, we are actually in this corner. And you remember okay. that's, the, that's the shovel. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. So as you can see, we are trying to do everything sustainable, yeah, you know, with the commitment, with, mm -hmm. you know, with the 2050 plan around the, the states and actually the world. So big part of this investment also is like we have a lot of energy savings. We treat water, we have electric vehicle charging. So it's a huge investment that we've done not only on the land, but also that, you know, it's trying to be efficient, trying to be eco-friendly. Wow. Um, and actually that's what mining is. I know like sometimes people refer to mining as a bad thing, but I mean, actually like, you know, they do not do this guy, it's mining and everything. <laughs> everything mining. Yeah. What about, I want to ask you, because like uh, from Ukraine, mm -hmm. part of the USSR before, and uh, they built also own like Belas, I think it's located in Belarus. Yes. Yes. You know this machine? Yes. And they still diesel. And I hear Komatsu is electric. Is this true? Yes. So our equipment is 100% electric. It has been electric. Most of all, 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 all this, of this shovel is electric. Wow. It's electric 100%. It has been electric for all over, I would say, 
100 years. So not, not Elon Musk, Komatsu was first to make yeah. electric trucks. What we've done before was like, you know, the DC technology, pretty old with the old brushes. Yeah. And now it's everything AC. So actually this is, you know, every time I talk to a customer, they're asking like, what are you doing about sustainability? I and mean, this machine is already electric, so there is few wow. to do. David, tell us a little bit about your background. You're from Peru and your journey. How have you decided it's your industry? Because of young, a lot of young people will watch this video and someone want to go to Kellogg, someone want to work for Komatsu or similar company. How have you decided it's your passion and that's what you want to do? So actually it was just by accident, I would say. So I remember when I was just getting out of um, you know, the university college in, in Peru, I couldn't find a job. I remember you needed to have like two internships to actually get your degree. And it took me like six months to, you know, to, to get an internship. And once I got it, I was a fresh mechanical engineer. Like I, I knew like I was good. So when I came to this building, I was kind of disappointed. You know, like this is a, just a small office, 20 people, as I was saying. This p &H, like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I had no clue. Um, I, the only thing I knew was like, it's, it's mining industry. I was like, oh yeah, it should be good. It's, you know, I heard a lot about mining. So I, I got the job offer, I accepted because I didn't have any choice at the time. And then, I was in the office, I was bored, I was thinking actually to quit the company. But then the manager that had the time, he told me like, we are looking a guy to go to the Highlands. Uh, we need, you know, I, I need some help. Well, there's a big project going on. And I said like, yeah, why not? You know, single, young. So I did it. I went there for six months. But did you go with him? For what project? Where? It was an overhaul, the one I was telling you. In the US? In, in Peru. Ah, in Peru, in Peru. okay. Uh, overhaul project and you need to go with him. Yes. To, to do that project. Yeah, he, he was looking for help. Like, you know, it's, it's a big project, uh, like at least 100 people there. So when I, when I went to this city, which is called Arequipa in Peru, in the highlands, and then I was looking how big the, the company was, because um, people from Milwaukee was going to, to Arequipa, to Peru, people from Chile and people from Colombia. So I saw like, you know, this is, this is kind of cool. This is kind of fun. Like there's a lot of people coming up here. And then when I was, you know, doing, doing my research, I actually found out that p &H, it was a huge company worldwide, as you can see. That's why I decided to stay. I started as a mechanical engineer, like giving support, like the guys, actually the question that you asked me before. I was servicing the machines, I was helping to fix the machine. Uh, we had a lot of Milwaukee visitors and I was, you know, I got into senior position, just I knew I, I was feeling very confident fixing machines. Customers loved me a lot. And then I was like, okay, you know, I need to do something else. And uh, suddenly at the time, my ex boss here in Milwaukee, he was like, I have this opportunity. And actually the timing was perfect. I was ready to do something else. I didn't want it, like, you know, they moved me to another city and I was like, I don't want to do this. So the opportunity came, I got my job offer. And in a month I was taking a plane to here to Milwaukee and here I am. Well, dream big, but start from small. Even 24 people company, small company could make your dream come true. This is actually our customer experience center. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually try to engage our customers to kind of take a sneak peek of what we do uh, on a macro space. Um, like this, what you can see here, this like, I would say door, mm -hmm. it's one of the Japanese products of Komatsu. It's, it's a doser, the one like actually pushes the earth. Mm -hmm. We will see a cool video, a 360 video, but um, come on. So, you know, in this, in this world of having machines connected and everything. Here's what we could do. Like we have machines connected around the planet. Maybe this is answering your question a bit. This is the Komatsu connected fleet. We can see where they located. Like there's one in Peru right there. Mm -hmm. the, well, we can show you the commodity if, if the machine is working or not. Wow. And not only for one product, we can show you a little bit more. Wow. Coal, copper, diamond, gold, iron, oil. So yep. All the ores in the planet. And this is, is where it's factory located. Yes. Right? Well, you know, there is a, there is a term called the ring of fire, which is actually this, and it goes all the way around. Mm, okay. And this is actually also where all the tectonic plates, they, you know, start getting together. And that's why there's a lot of earthquakes in that area. And if you can see the, the like, if you pull up Google Maps, you will see that all the Rocky Mountains are here, yeah. then the Andes, Andes. and it's, it's go all the way, like, you know, Japan and like that. So all that area, it's actually, made of mining. So that's why mining is speaking really close to the Pacific Ocean because it's uh, you have copper, you have you know coal, you have iron, gold. It's cool. Yeah. How usually this works? They buy this equipment for loan or they lease this equipment and for what is the usage period of for so this equipment? Our machines are designed for over 20 years. 20 years. 
So it's a huge investment for any mining company. So what they look for is that you, you buy a machine and you can at least run it for 10 years. After the year number 10, you do like a main, you would call it like an outage or overhaul, which you make mm -hmm. basically like put everything new. No so that's like the midlife of the machine. Usually by year 18, you're planning to buy another unit just to replace it. Oh, but sometimes our machines, you, you, will, you will hear like companies or customers, they run it till 25, 30 years, but yeah. it, it gets more expensive because technology wise, steel, you gotta fix more cracks on the structure. Maybe the hydraulics are not the same. So mm -hmm. I would say by that time, it's better to buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> what is the price range for this kind of equipment? So it it really depends on the market, depends on the size. But you're talking about like a really tiny one from maybe 10 million up to 35. From million. 10. Yes. Okay. From, from 10, 10 million. million to 35. It's yes. expensive stuff. Yes, it's expensive stuff. And who's the biggest customer? So I have a lot, uh, but the mining industry is divided in big corporations. But in, in that region, for example, um, so it will be BHP, like copper, like the copper producers, the iron ore, steel, coal producers. So we have like Tech, BHP, Freeport, uh, Newmont, Rio Tinto, which is Australian, like the Australian uh, mining industry is big. And that's on the ore side. If you talk about the oil sands, we have Suncor, C and RL, Exxon, Shell, really, really huge corporations, which they are able to make these type of investments. And you told me a little bit before, like, for example, uh, mining sites, it's always somewhere like in the mountains area where there's no people around, right? Yeah. If something happened with this truck, for example, I have trucks, right? Something happened, I go to road service. Mm -hmm. If something happens there, people from command to help with uh, maintenance, fix the equipment or? Yes, yes, actually we usually, when we when you buy this machine, you don't want, you know, that to happen. So you, we offer a service contract sometimes. And but how long you need to wait for that? We can have people inside for you. So usually regions and then like small, I would say locations, they have their own technicians, like mm -hmm. we work 24 seven on call. Okay. So if something happens, they maybe they just go from that town. If the issue gets bigger and they don't know how to fix it, they have this, they call like tier support uh, mesh. So it goes all the way up. We, in Milwaukee, we are tier four. Mm. Something's like really catastrophic happens and no one in the region, no one in the country, no one anywhere. We send people from Milwaukee. Wow. Yep. Interesting. What, uh, why you make decision to come to came for Kellogg and why Kellogg? Do you have any other options or you decide just so to go to, straight to Kellogg? To be honest, when I was in Peru, and I think I mentioned uh, this before to, to the group, I didn't have any expectations to move to the States. Like this opportunity came and I took it, but I really was looking forward to do something different. I think, in, especially in my background, you can have all the technical knowledge, you can know the industry, but there is always this business thing missing. There was, a, I would say, a year in my life when I was like really tired of what I was doing at work and I was looking to expand my career. And the next step was to do a master's. I was looking, of course, in Peru first, and then I was comparing the investment of doing to the States. That was like for me, like a, like a really long shot. But then this US opportunity came. So when I moved here, I'm like, I need to look what's around me. So I'm, I'm like an hour and a half from here and commuting time will be faster and also like, Kellogg is a super huge school. Like, what do you think about this program after two quarters? Because we almost finished. Yeah, I mean, it's, almost, it's almost done. I think the experience is, is amazing. It's amazing in terms that, I mean, there is a lot of knowledge that is out there. You have such a diverse group, people from many industries, everyone trying to do the right thing. That's what, what, I, what I believe. Of course, at the beginning, you, you gotta just, you know, put yourself out there, start meeting people, get to know each other. Yeah. But I think like just my whole thing when I came, even in Miami, like just like, I'm, I'm gonna be the guy watching and observing, listening to, and then adjust to that, which I mean, that's my, I would say my I'm method. The same. I'm yes. also, I will need to figure out what's going on first. It was also difficult in Miami because it was too much, yeah, it was, it too was. many people and you just can concentrate, you forget the names. It was, uh, we, we don't even see a sun for three days. I remember I left the class on like third day and we went outside just to see the sun because we was always in, inside the building in Miami. In Miami, always inside the building. Yeah. It was not that easy, but they probably make this for some like reason to see how you'll survive in that. Way. And to be honest, like that's life. I yeah, mean, you you're experiencing the same what you're just putting together with a with a group outside Gallup. So like in your workspace, I think I'm really keen of adapting, just like putting yourself like uh, culture, language barrier, uh, knowledge. Uh, I'm really happy that um, 
I have my girlfriend, she was like super supportive all the time. Like we kinda joke about this, like she's my English teacher as well. So You see my wife doesn't want to teach me English. She said like if you lose your accent I will divorce you. <laughs> That's why yeah, I'm, I, I'm I get, sorry I about my accent. Uh, no one wanna teach me no one English. Like, but some, she never correct me. Never, never, ever? Never. In she me- can say like when we have like some like Argus. She make a fun about me. It's not even sounds like that. <laughs> Or you can say like that. No, It's I, not right. She make a fun about me, but she never correct me. Like so, okay, you say wrong. Let's say like that. No. Oh no. In my case, like it's. I mean, she likes my accent as well. Like she was like, don't lose your accent, which I'm fine with that. to be honest. But sometimes, like I made like really silly mistakes. Just like the way you pronounce like some words, yeah, yeah. it could be like really funny or it could be like very offensive. <laughs> so it's, I mean, in those situations, she's like, okay, like, let's sit together. And, like, <laughs> this is the way. And then like, there are like words that I cannot pronounce. So she's like, okay, take your time. So. And what is your favorite moment? Like what, what like you like most about this program or one day was you was figure out, okay, it's the right decision and I enjoy a lot. Like when you was break point, you know? I think like he, the it was of course outside campus. Andres was here and he was teasing me like, hey, like I'm here and we're not going out. And of course the weather wasn't the greatest. So suddenly I just texted on, the, on our WhatsApp group like, hey guys, we're going to a Peruvian restaurant. It's like, you're welcome. We were 10 people. We had, you know, drinks, we ate, we just shared. And in, the, in, in that moment when, of course, like with, with some drinks inside and everything people started like, feeling comfortable with I was like heck yeah like this is Kela I mean this is this is the network I want to build this is the people I want to be and I know like they want to do the right thing I, I think that for me was the, the, the master point of, of the program yeah that's why uh, you know one of the reasons when a lot of people uh, not a lot but some people probably came to this program in age when you're older it's difficult to find friends And I had uh, also a chance to talk with a person who finished our school five years ago or something. And he said, I, I couldn't believe I, could, I will be able to find a friend in the year like 40. And he said, I am very close now with two people from my school. Till now, after I finished school, we still talk, we still meet. And it's it's true. Because if you go to the gym or you meet at work, it's a little bit different. There's a barrier there, yeah. for sure. And here at school, it's when you spend time together. Do you have big dreams? This can be not just only about work or of everything in your life what you dream about. So maybe my, some travel, maybe something. Yeah, my big dream was usually every six months was different. <laughs> But I would say if I need to, to put it on, on, on one big dream, it's like, to, I mean, being, being happy with whatever you do is important. To have a family, I think it's key for not, not for me, for the society. Like I think society needs people and I, I think I've been really grateful with my, my family, my parents, how, to, how they raised me when I was a, a kid. So I would say if I have a family and I can be happy with whatever I'm doing, not even maybe a C-suite position, but I'm like good and I'm established and I can do whatever I want in terms like maybe I need to save some money today to do something tomorrow, I'll be happy. Because I mean, that's, that's the whole point. Like, I think at the beginning when I was younger, I was like really ambitious about like, I want to do this because I want to have this, this, this income and blah, 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 yada, yada. But, I think at the end of the day, when you go to to your bed and you start crashing, you say like, okay, it's been a good day, a bad day, because you're surrounded by people. Um, maybe you have high rate. Oh, and also you gotta be eating prudent. <laughs> I need to add that on, on my brain. Yeah, it's, they say like, uh, it's also scientists did uh, this uh, discovery and they found out that what makes people happy, it's stuff which not cost anything. Yes. Because love, health, and like keys, and other stuff which really make people happy not when you buy something expensive because it's like temporary yeah. effect you, you bought it then like you cross the list i did it yeah what's next yeah. and then you start getting you know, more things you know, so it's never never stop right, thank you so much and course, good man. luck with all your journey thank you I appreciate it. a lot for your time thank of you. course thanks it was great